Good morning, beloved. It's good to be with you this morning. And even though I am not with you in the flesh, still in the spirit, in my heart, I am with you. Because uh, at the end of the day, what happened was on Friday afternoon, I started coughing and I realized that there's something not, not right. Uh, I started getting uh, body aches on, on Saturday, yesterday. And um, so I decided I didn't have a backup plan with regards to, to sharing God's word with you. So I decided, all right, let me record it. <clears throat> and, uh, and that way I still have the privilege to share God's word with you. And you can still listen to God's word as even though it is virtual and in a sense. Uh, I wanted to do it live, but the technical side of it is a little difficult for me to do it live from home. All right, so this is a recording, but at the end of the day, it's still God's word that speaks. So please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read verse 9 to 11, and then also verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 to 11, and then also verse 17 and 18. All right, with your Bibles open, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for your word. Thank you that even though your word is being shared this morning uh, through digital means, that it's still your word and that your word still speaks to us. I pray, Father, that you will open up our hearts this morning, that you will open up our minds so that we may receive your word, understand your word, Father, so that you may be glorified in and through our lives. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 to 11. Therefore, we make it our aim. This is the Apostle Paul speaking eh, to the Corinthian believers. <coughs> Pardon me. He says, We make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him, whether we are still alive or whether we are with Christ, to be well-pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. But each one, um, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. Then verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I want you to notice verse 18. Now all things are of God. And it was him who reconciled us to himself. Through Jesus Christ. All right. And then what he did was he gave us the ministry of reconciliation to tell people that we have now been reconciled to God. And that's just amazing. All right. If you go back to verse 9, just quickly, he says, uh, This is what Paul says. He says, Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, we've looked at that, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So we're all going to come before the Bema Seat of Christ. That's what it's called. Why are we going to be, uh, come before the Judgment Seat of Christ? Is that each one of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, whether profitable or unprofitable. All right. So, And because we know the terror of the Lord, we know that God is, is a just God. We know that, that God <clears throat> is serious about... Um, his, his walk with us. He's serious about placing our, His Spirit within us so that we can actually live for Him. Uh, we, because we know that, the Apostle Paul says, we persuade men. So we, we come to them and say, listen, you need to live the kind of life that God wants you to live because it's a terror to f fall into the hands of the Lord. It is an awful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. All right. So, then verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all these things are of God. He has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and then has given us the ministry of reconcilia uh, reconciliation. You know what? One of the problems that we find in, in this world specifically, in, in the Christian, the church world, is that people are very focused on this life. You know, specifically in this life, on, on <clears throat> making it to heaven, to kind of make sure that they are saved. That we sometimes neglect to focus on the wonderful teachings that we find here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Specifically with the prospect of the glorious rewards that we are going to receive because of the work that we have done while we were alive. Now, let me make it clear. And, and let, me, let me say it right from the start. I don't believe that anyone can work their way into heaven. Salvation is a gift from God. It's a gift by God's grace. It's completely undeserved. It's, we receive God's unmerited favor. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. All right, to the glory of God alone. The rewards that we will receive when we die, and what Paul is speaking about here, is basically based on our performance in a sense. The way that we performed, the, what we have done in the body, whether it is profitable or not profitable, whether it's good or whether it's not good. What we have done in and through the power of the Holy Spirit, this side of the grave, those are the things that's going to count and those are the rewards that we will be receiving. I mean, we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are His workmanship. Ah, what does that mean? It means that God has done something in us. We are His workmanship. He has done a marvelous work in us. Huh? So we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God decided that we are going to be saved. And when God saves us, God is going to, how can I say, work it in us to do certain things for His glory. And He prepared it beforehand so that we would walk in those things. And if we do, then God will bless us. God will reward us for doing it. So we are His workmanship. right? So it's God who performed the work of salvation in us by, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Now it's important to understand what and who we are as believers, as, as, as professing believers, people who profess that we have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. We, we have been regenerated by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We need to understand what we are, who we are, not, not merely what we are going to be someday in the future. No, 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 no. It is what and who we are as believers now. What, what is our part? What, what has God given us as a, as a gift, or as part of this salvation that he has given us freely? Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us that every believer is basically a new creature. <coughs> Pardon me. All believers are new creatures. Now, maybe if we understand this, maybe, and, and not just maybe just understand it, but if it is a reality that, that we actually are new people, then maybe that will be the catalyst to, to, for us to start acting the way that God expects us to act. You know, that we will act like new creatures. I believe there are too many professing believers today. People that say they believe in Jesus Christ, that they are saved. But they are acting exactly the same way they did before they became believers. It, it, no, nothing has changed. The new creatures that they've become looks just like the old ones. All right, so I want us to spend just a few moments as we look at what it means to be a new creation. What does it mean to be a new creation, a new creature in Christ? Now first, <clears throat> to be a new creation means that we have a brand new relationship with God. You see, first you have a relationship with God, and He can now use you to do what He wants you to do for Him. You see, before God saved us by His grace, now, before He saved us, 
you and I could not do what God wanted us to do. I mean, non-Christians fail to do what God expects them to do because they are enemies of God. They don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling them because it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to do what God wants us to do for Him. Eh? And, and when we become true believers, when we become believers in Jesus Christ, we become, or God becomes our Father. And, and because He's our Father, He can now tell us what He wants done and what He doesn't want done. And, and we need to be obedient to Him. But we can do it because He did something in us. We ask His workmanship. He did something in us. He made us new creatures so that we can actually now live for Him. You see, and we need to understand, God as our Father, He has the right to chasten us if we disobey Him, if we do not do what He expects us to do. We read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. All right, so it's important <clears throat> for us to be new creations or a new creation means that we have a brand new relationship with God. We are reconciled to God. And, and that reconciliation, by the way, took place through Jesus Christ. Remember what sin did? Sin separated us from God. It separated us from fellowship with God. All human beings who are born in sin are separated from fellowship with God. But what Jesus Christ did was he came and he reconciled us to God. All right. And then he gives us the ministry of reconciliation that we can go out and say, people who are living as sinners, as enemies of God, they can now be reconciled to God. All right. The second thing <coughs> to be a new creation means that we have become part of a new government. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13, we find an important message about this new government that we become members of. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. He says, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, which means you did not belong to any government. You were not part of the people of Israel. And he says, and you were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Then verse 13, he says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Can you see what happens? We become part of this new covenant. The, and the government is the government that God established over Israel. We become part of the commonwealth of Israel. So we are Gentiles who get saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And then we are added to this new government that God has created. Of which Israel was just a, a forerunner. Just laying the foundation for the Messiah that was to come, that was going to set up his kingdom. And we will become part of the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus and faith in him. Amazing stuff. Right, so we become part of this new government, our government that God set up in Christ. But to be new crea creations also means that we now stand in a new relationship to others. Not just to God, that we have now been reconciled to God through Christ Jesus and what Jesus did for us. But we <clears throat> can now stand in a new relationship with other people. You see, and when I talk about others, I, I mean that someone, <coughs> pardon me, someone who has become a new creation now has a new relationship with the church and a new relationship with the world. Not just only the church, not just only believers, but also a new relationship with with the world you see if you're a new creation you become part of the church of jesus christ Acts chapter 2 tells us very clearly if you are a new creation you become um, disassociated with the world and the things of this world first john chapter 2 says it very clearly so we become part of the church but we become disassociated with the world and the things of this world where before we were part of the world and we kind of did everything that was in the world and we enjoyed the things of the world. Now that we are new creation, a new creation in Christ, and we've become part of the church, we hate the things of the world. And we see the world as, 
as, as a people who are lost that needs Christ and needs God's forgiveness and needs reconciliation. So our relationship with the world changes from being part of the world to reaching out to the world. You see, that's what happens to us. Now, it's as if the world doesn't understand us any longer, is it? Have you, have you noticed that? I mean, when God saves us, we become completely different to the world. The things that we used to enjoy before is the things that the world enjoys. We don't enjoy that anymore. The things of the, that the world enjoyed is no longer the things that you and I enjoy. We, we don't want to follow after those things. Our priorities have completely shifted from the things which used to occupy our time and our energy to new things. We, we now focus on the things of God. We now focus on the things that are eternal, things that are heavenly. Those are the things that we now focus on. Beloved, when we become new creatures in Christ, the old things become entirely different. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Which means you were a certain way when you were in the world and you were living in accordance to the world. But when you became a new creation, all things have become new. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Right, but to be a new creation, fourthly, also means that we will be involved in a new thing. Yeah. It's going to be new. And, and we will have new experiences that we have, well, we've never had before. You know, it doesn't mean that we will always be on the mountaintop. Oh, I am so blessed. No, that's not what it means. It also doesn't mean that we will no longer have struggles and disappointments. You see, when you become a new creation, God starts using you to fulfill His purposes and His plans on this earth. You, you become an instrument in the hands of the living God. God starts using you to minister into the lives of other people. God starts using you to pray for people and for their circumstances and you pray for things to happen that is in line with God's will and God's purpose. God starts using you to reach people with the good news of the gospel as we become ambassadors of God's kingdom. You see, when we are new creatures, you and I start to experience how God uses us and how God directs us every single day of our lives. We start to experience the, the, the word becoming alive and and when i read the bible it's as if the the words in the bible just becomes alive and it starts speaking into my everyday life and my experiences and i also start experiencing the blessings of god on on my life start to experience how you um how can i say how you get encouraged, how, how the Holy Spirit works in you to share your faith that you've never done before. Before you were scared to do it and all of a sudden now, huh? no, I'm a new creature. I want to tell people about the fact that I am new. I have new experiences. I'm sharing the gospel. I'm reaching out to people who are not saved. You see, you start to experience that you have hope for the future. And you just know that all the things that you are doing for the Lord will be rewarded. That, that, that's the thing. That's what it means to be a new crea a creation, a new creature in Christ. But also to be a new cre creature basically means that we already partake in the rewards that God will ultimately give us. So there's, there's going to be a reward obviously, in the future, but we already kind of have it. Uh, it's the kind of the, the reality of having the rewards already, but not having it yet. You, you see, I, I'm, I'm saved by God's grace already. You know, the moment that He regenerates me by His Spirit, I am saved. But 
if I read the New Testament, I see that I will still be saved when I am with Christ for eternity. That will be the, the ultimate salvation, is to be with Christ, free from this world and all the things of this world, and be with Christ forever and ever. Now we still have limitations. Now, now we can still fall into sin, but one day we will see Him face to face and we will be with Him. So we have salvation. I am saved by God's grace already, but I will be saved when I'm with Christ for eternity. I have eternal life already because I've been saved. The moment I'm regenerated, I have eternal life. The moment God saves me, I've started eternal life with Christ. You see, death is only a bridge on the same road. So I, I've started with eternal life. So off I go. And then death comes. And death is just kind of crossing that bridge into eternity into eternity with Christ. All right. And that happens because when God saves me, He gives me the gift of eternal life. All right. I've been reconciled with God for all eternity, the moment He saves me. But I'm not in His physical presence yet. Can you see the tension there? I'm reconciled with God. I now have fellowship with God. <clears throat> he speaks to me through His Word. But I'm not in his physical presence yet. All right. But by faith, I am already in his presence. So I have it, but I don't have it at the same time. You see, every reward God gives his children because of their faithfulness while on this earth has been given to them already. But it's not completely manifested yet. I mean, we do not experience the fullness of all God's blessings yet. But we already have a part in all of his blessings. You see, God makes us brand spanking new creatures. He places us into his eternal kingdom. And he fills us with his Holy Spirit. God, God takes each one of us and he gives us gifts by his Holy Spirit. So that we can do his will. So that we can act as his ambassadors on this earth. God gives us everything that we need to be able to do what he wants us to do. And then he sends us out as foreigners in this world <clears throat> to tell others about the awesome thing that God has done for us. To be witnesses of what God has done in our lives. But beloved, there's a problem. And I think that's the, that's the problem that we face. Specifically within the, <clears throat> let's call it more nominal church. Uh, when we talk about the, the, the mainline churches. The problem is if nothing happened in someone, then that person has nothing to share. Maybe that's why the church is so silent. Maybe that's why the church is not sharing what God has done in their lives. <clears throat> you see, if nothing happened to you, then you cannot live for God because you are not empowered by Him to do His will. If nothing happened to you, you will... Not be able to experience God's work in your life. Because God has to do something in you. We are His workmanship. And when we are His workmanship, He's the one through His Spirit that enables us to do in accordance to His purposes and His plans. <clears throat> so let me conclude. The question that you and I are faced with. In, in light of what, what has been said up to this point. If I had to ask you the question, are you a new creation? Has everything become new? Is God busy in your life making you a brand spanking new person? <clears throat> I, I didn't ask you if you've been baptized. Or if you pray regularly or read your Bible. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you, are you a new creation? Are you sure that you are new? You see, your answer to this question will not only determine your eternal destiny, it will also determine the kind of life that you will li live now here. But if you can say in the affirmative, yes, I am a new creation. Oh, beloved, what a blessing <clears throat> to know that we will be rewarded for Um, 
because God works in us. <laughs> it's amazing. God does it in us, works in us. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then he rewards us for it. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your love and kindness towards us. <clears throat> thank you that we are new creations. I pray for those who are not, Father, that today will be the day. And for those who are new creatures, Father, that we will live as new creatures. Because you've done everything for us. So amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for listening. God willing, see you next week.